So before we get started, I want to take a second to actually talk about why we use child themes in WordPress. Um, rest assured, if you want to skip this video and just dive right into uh, building your own child theme, you can totally do that. You're not going to miss anything essential to the nuts and bolts of building child themes. Um, but I do want to include this video in here just because I find it's useful to talk a little bit about why we use child themes because understanding that kind of helps us be better developers. Um, the first reason and probably the most commonly cited reason for using child themes has to do with when you want to modify an existing theme, um, the problems that come up when you apply updates later on. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Um, so, well, let's take a look at our, our demo site right here. I've got a, a kind of plain vanilla version of WordPress installed at demo.robobunnyattack.com. Here's the back end, um, the administrative dashboard, and we've activated the 2012 theme. Okay. And it's just a very boring theme, but it's great for example purposes. Let's say that I had made some sort of a tweak or some sort of a kind of a small style tweak to this. And, uh, and you can actually do this through the administrative, da administrative dashboard. And by tweaks, I'm not talking about, you know, going in here and changing the settings. I'm talking about actually using this editor button down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and and see what's available through this editor button. Maybe you've actually gone in here and already and you've used this to make some small tweaks to the style sheet um, of your theme, or maybe you've even been really adventurous and tried kind of messing around with some of these PHP files. I'm going to show you what happens when we do this. Okay, um, and by the way, I actually usually don't use the editor in the back end of WordPress. Um, I, I tend to I tend to be very nervous about doing this. Um, first of all, it's not a great way to edit uh, files. There's much easier ways to edit these files using better tools. I'm going to show you how to use those. Um, but also because this makes me nervous having this available, particularly if I have other people who have administrative access to my site or heaven forbid, if there was ever a security problem, someone happened to break into the back end of the site and then they would have access to the editor features here. That's very nerve wracking. It's kind of a bad thing. So I tend to disable this. There's plugins that allow you to disable this. I like to disable this and then do all my edits um, using, you know, my FTP client and a, and a plain text editor. Um, but for argument's sake, let's, let's say we'd gone in here and let's say we had done something really simple. I'm going to scroll down here and here's a perfect example. We see here that the background color is just a really boring gray. It shows up here. Oops, I have to scroll back down here. It shows up here as just a plain uh, here's a hexadecimal color that looks like that's the the, the background color for the body. Let's say we wanted to change this to something a bit more exciting. Let's just choose red for the time being. Okay. And yes, as you remember, if you remember your CSS, red actually is a valid color name in CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and update this file and let's see if this gets applied to our theme. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just click reload and Yes. Okay. So that very, very small tweak allowed me to change the background color of this particular theme. Okay. This is not a super exciting, uh, um, style change. Um, but I'm just using this as an example. Now, what happens if let's say we go to the dashboard over here and let's say we get a little notification saying, Oh, you know, the developers of the 2012 theme have released a new update. Okay. To this particular theme you might be tempted to ignore this and ignoring updates or your update notifications is generally a very bad idea. Okay. Sometimes these updates are provided to add more functionality, but more often than not, they're often provided uh, for security reasons. There might've been some sort of security hold discovered within this particular theme, sometimes plugins, or maybe even the core of WordPress itself. And as soon as the developers discover that they will release a fix and it is up to you to apply those changes as soon as possible. For Fortunately, WordPress makes it super easy to apply updates. Okay. There, I don't have any um, pending updates right here, but if I had, you would just see a, a checkbox and I would literally just click a checkbox and say, yes, apply update. And it happens in a matter of seconds. It's super, super easy to do. The problem with this, however, is uh, think about, um, let's pretend that there was an, an update to the 2012 theme. Okay. The developers discovered, let's say there was some sort of a security problem and they discovered, oops, we better fix that. They release an update. What happens if you go ahead and update that? Well, I'll tell you that what is most likely going to happen is this file down here that you edited, this style.css file, which is a part of this theme, will likely get overwritten. Okay. It will get completely overwritten with the new updated file. And so what happens to your customizations? 
they are lost and that's no good. Okay. One small customization is not the end of the world, but imagine if you've been spending weeks and weeks and weeks tweaking individual lines in here, it would be ridiculous to try to go back and redo that over again. Yes, you could keep a backup and then go in and change that again, but it's a whole lot of work. Okay. Child themes allow us to avoid that problem altogether. We can select a parent theme and then we can build a child theme that relies on that parent theme, but stores all the customizations within a separate area within this child theme folder. So any customizations that you happen to make, let's say you decide to change the background to red or anything that's stored completely separately from the parent theme files. So you can safely apply those updates. Okay. And it will have no impact whatsoever on the customizations that you make. So that's the most commonly cited reason for um, using child themes. And it's a really good one. Another reason is that frankly, it really speeds up your development time. Okay. And I always tell my students, particularly when you are starting off with WordPress or you are what I, what I call an advanced beginner. Okay. Maybe you've, you've been using WordPress for a while. You understand how to add posts and pages and, and kind of configure sites, you know, that, that sort of thing, you know, how to change themes, but maybe you can't quite find the perfect theme for your needs. And maybe you wish, Oh, if only I could just change this, this color or this image, or just change this font size or this font type or something like that. Um, I, I find that uh, typically, as long as you can find a theme, a parent theme that more or less matches the overall layout of the site that you want. Okay. And, um, and as, as long as you have that and you can select that, then a child theme allows you to go in and just tweak the little things that you, you want to change. If you can find a parent theme that brings you 90% of the way there, then it saves you a whole lot of time because you don't have to spend all that time developing your overall site layout from scratch. Okay. Here's an example. So I'm at the themes directory right now at wordpress.org. So it's just wordpress.org slash themes. Let's take a look. We have, I mean, there's over 2,200 themes here. So there's a large variety of themes to choose from already. And these, a lot of these are great themes. Here's an example, human. Okay. This looks like a lovely theme. Let's just open this up in a new tab so that we can take a closer look at this particular screenshot. Let's say, okay, that you had drawn out, you had an idea in your head of how you wanted your site to be laid out. Okay. And let's say this just for argument's sake, let's pretend that this is more or less the way you wanted to organize your site. Okay. But maybe you're not crazy about the colors or maybe you're not crazy about, you know, the font or things like that. Okay. But overall you're happy with this idea of the two sidebars and having a menu up here and then a secondary menu there, that sort of thing. Okay. Maybe this is, you're thinking, oh, this is great. This is a great candidate in that case to use as a parent theme. Okay. Because it's pretty straightforward. You could install this theme and then any tweaks that you want to make in terms of the color or the fonts or things like that, maybe you want to change slightly the size of things. You can do that. You can apply those changes within a child theme. Um, but because you're using a, a parent theme that matches the overall layout of the site that you want, it's actually saved you a ton of development time. Okay. Yes, it is possible to build, you know, the whole layout that you want from scratch. It's possible to change layouts and stuff like that, but you really have to have really, really sharp CSS skills to be able to do that. And again, you know, most of the, most of the students I teach are at that advanced beginner stage, right? They've know enough HTML and CSS to get started. They, you know, they're pretty comfortable with WordPress. Um, but you know, building an entire site, you know, and, and the whole layout and customizing all of that while it's possible, it's just really going to take an awful lot of time for them. And generally speaking, they don't have the time to do that. So using child themes in combination with, you know, parent themes that are the closest to what you want can really save you a lot of time. And finally, the third reason, and this is the reason people don't talk about a lot, but I think it's probably one of the most important reasons is that using child themes and really getting comfortable with creating those is a fantastic way to get started. If you're just starting to learn WordPress theme development. Okay. Ultimately you may want to actually move into WordPress theme development. You might want to build your own themes either for yourself or for your client or possibly even your own theme to sell or to have to share with the rest of the WordPress community. Um, but we have to learn to crawl before we can walk. Right. And, 
and crawling, basically using those child themes is a fantastic way to start to become familiar with the way themes are organized in WordPress. Let's have a quick look. I'm, I'm logged into my FTP. Uh, my, I'm using CyberDuck, which is my FTP client, and I'm just logged into my server right now. And inside the themes folder in my WordPress installation, here are the, the, the three uh, themes that are currently available to me, and we can see them right here. Okay, here are the three themes right here. And already we're starting to learn, oh, okay, so the themes are there. That corresponds to what shows up there. Okay, if I look inside here, we see, whoa, this looks really overwhelming to a beginner, right? And it is overwhelming when you don't know that. Maybe you don't know any PHP. Maybe you've never coded in PHP. You're going to need to know some PHP in order to do theme development, but not knowing PHP doesn't have to stop you from getting started, okay? Um, let's also take a look here. Um, here's the style sheet. This is the style sheet we were editing on this particular site. I'm just going to edit it via my FTP uh, client right here. I'm just going to open it up in Text Wrangler. Here's another thing. Look at all the CSS, all the CSS style, styles that are here. There's a ton of information here. And this, okay, this is really going to extend your CSS skills. Okay, you're going to become so much better at CSS simply by the fact that you're going to have access to this. You're going to look at all this and you're going to start to figure out, okay, what do I have to change? What do I have to, you know, edit in my child theme? You're going to get really, really good at CSS. And then maybe you'll even venture into having a look at at things like page templates. Okay, maybe you don't even know what a page template is right now, but eventually as you become more and more familiar with, with your child theme and as you kind of delve a bit deeper into more customizations that are avail available to you, you might start doing things like, well, let's take a look at what's inside here. And again, maybe this looks like gibberish to you, but over time this will start to make sense. Okay, um, so as a stepping stone to full-blown theme development, working with child themes is terrific. So I really recommend it as a learning tool for yourself. Okay, so in the next tutorial, I'm going to go over what you need to get started. Okay, what requirements in terms of what you need to know to make sure that you can actually do this successfully, as well as what software you need and, and what kind of a setup you need to have. Okay, so I'll see you then.